Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Happy Monday to you. Actually, happy Cyber Monday to you. And before I get this video started, Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics actually has merchandise. Yeah, check it out. Um, not exactly Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I mean, I can't necessarily market the Lego name. Um, but there is one thing I have with Hino in it. But the rest is just kind of cool designs that I've done for robotic students or teachers or just people who like robotics. So if you can get a chance, check out the link to uh, my merchandise site. Just check it out. There's there's some um, designs that I've put up. I plan to put up more designs just for you guys to look around. And hopefully, if you like something, go for it. Um, but anyway, today's video has to do with the robot game. Um, it's one third of your team's FLL competition score. Um, but today's look inside the robot game is actually just the game part. Um, when you guys play games like, you know, chess, there's a strategy to it. You don't just go out and randomly move pieces around. There's a strategy that you need to incorporate to be successful. In the robot game, I believe it's the same way. Um, you look at the board and you kind of strategize what you want to do and if you make the most of your moves, you should be very successful. So what I want to do today is take a look at the Into Orbit, uh, basically the game board, and show you just some strategies that I encourage my teams to do. I ultimately let them decide for themselves, but I throw it out there just so that they, they can digest or think about what you know the board is um, offering them and to see what they do. So let's go to the board. Okay, as you take a look at the Into Orbit game board, it's funny that I call it a game board, but it actually is, because if you are doing the robot game, it is a game, and it's a board. So, like chess, I look at this like a game board, and I kind of just dissect the sections here, and kind of help my teams to strategize their robot game. So, I've done this before. I did this last year with the Hydrodynamics board. I kind of took the entire board here, and split it up into four quadrants and the number one strategy I kind of encourage my students or my you know my FLL team members to do is to take advantage of the closer quadrants you guys know coaches uh, students that the farther away you go from base the more unreliable the more inconsistent your missions become so I have my students or my team members kind of concentrate on the first two quadrants here or the upper left and lower left quadrants um, just because they're closer just because if something screws up it takes a lot less time to redo those missions so check this out if you have not noticed this the upper left or upper yeah this first quadrant here there is 130 points just in this upper left quadrant a lot a lot of points in a very close area. So that's something I kind of put a bug in my students' ears, like you have a lot of points in a very close area. Uh, I would then have my students look at this lower left quadrant. Now that, that does involve the habitation hub. So obviously there is some difficulty here to be thought of. Um, you know, your team has to sit down and think, okay, I see the points, I see they're close. Now the next thought would be, is that mission doable? Is it worth our time? Is it worth the effort? So there's a lot of strategy that goes along with these points. Um, there are some pretty doable of these 130 points in this upper left quadrant. So that's something to think about. And then as we move over to the, the right side of the board, we do see a lot of points there in the upper right quadrant. But again, that's putting your robot farther away from base. Um, it's, it's asking your team, can you do a consistent mission or missions in that upper right quadrant? And the same thing with the lower right quadrant, uh, which has the escape velocity or observatory. These 52 points 
as they are farther away from base, they are doable missions as opposed to the upper right where it might get a little tougher, it might be a little more inconsistent. So take a look at this paper again and just kind of help your teammates, your coaches strategize on where are the points, how doable is that mission, and look at the vicinity of the, the board here and see where your points can be taken and, you know, obviously the closer the better. The second thing that I kind of stress or encourage my students to do is to also think about reliability. The missions, if you can break down your team's missions by percentages, I usually encourage my students to do the higher percentage missions earlier or first. Um, there's a couple of reasons I ask my students to do that. And again, I let them decide for themselves. Um, is number one, it's a great morale booster to do a first mission and have that one be your bread and butter mission where it, it works 80 to 90 to 100% of the time. And it, it just kind of sets the tone for the whole, you know, your whole team's missions. If you can get that first one done, everybody's hyped, everybody's pumped, everybody's excited. And usually that's a great start. And second of all, um, it's kind of obvious, if you do a lot of your inconsistent missions first, it might not leave time for your bread and butter or, you know, it happens most of the time missions. So I have a saying in my class, don't leave anything on the table. And that basically means don't leave your, you know, your, more, your most consistent mission. Don't leave those points on the table by not getting to it. Get those points first and leave your more inconsistent missions to be last. But again, in all fun and games, uh, let your teams decide this, but maybe throw that out just so they can kind of chew on that and go, oh, maybe that is a good idea to get those observatory points that we always seem to get. Get that first, get those out of the way. So if something else doesn't work, you're not sitting there going, wow, I wish we would have had time to do the one mission that we know always works. You got that one already. So again, just to strategize about the game, talk to your team about where the points are, um, the closer the better, but again, let them decide that. And the second of all is, you know, try to get those money mission points early in your rounds so that way you can accumulate those points and not, you know, not get to those points because you were doing all your inconsistent missions doing those over and over again, and you're not leaving enough time for your consistent ones. Okay, so again, happy Cyber Monday to you guys. If you get the chance, check out the link for my merchandise or you know my store. Um, check that out. See if you like anything. Let me know in the comments section what you might want to see, and I might try to get that in for you guys. But other than that, I'm Mr. Hino from Mr. Neal's Lego Robotics. I'm out.